Hey, sexies. It's like three days before Christmas in late December and I'm forcing myself to do a November reading wrap up because it would be the only month I didn't do it this year and I can't do that. This looks deflated. Shall we fix? Let's turn that frown upside down, baby. <laughs> it's a double-sided pillow. I'm not a magician. I really don't feel like doing this for some reason. So that's a great way to start a video and retain viewers, right? <laughs> we'll try to make it fun. We'll try to make it cute. Let me pull up my story graph and see what I read in November. I don't remember. In November. Wow. Very condensed, weird month. Have no memories of this reading month, really. So first up, let me scoot over so I can put my my uh, my pictures here. I read Barrel Fever by David Sedaris. I did not like this David Sedaris. Half of it was short stories that were really disjointed and weird. I don't go to Sedaris for fiction. I go for the personal essays. And the personal essays in this weren't hitting either. Um, very early release of his, not one of my favorites. I'm glad I read it because I am genuinely a completist of Sedaris and now I've read everything, but would not recommend. If you're new, start with maybe Me Talk Pretty One Day or Calypso, if you really wanna get right to the good stuff. After that, I read a 2022 release, which is called Don't Say We Didn't Warn You by Ariel Delgado Dixon. Very creepy book, I liked this book. So it's a piece of, hmm. It's a piece of literary fiction about two sisters who grow up in a chaotic and traumatic household. Their parents aren't really available to them. And they are both taken to a wilderness camp for troubled teens in the middle of the night. And that is a result of them getting into trouble at home and their parents being kind of at a loss of what to do with them. And it kind of follows them through adulthood and reflections on their time in the camp and them failing to make stable relationships as an adult but it has this like eerie overtone of like menacing dread the whole time uh someone recently asked me for a recommendation to a book that was similar to the deeper the water the uglier the fish which is a book i love and i was like "Ooh, this one it's not out yet but it was the first one that reminded me of it way less dark and fucked up and twisted than the deeper the water the ugly the fish but in a tone it had some similar energy it also had like a great sense of place about it most of it takes place in this like rural little community suburb an hour outside of new york city and you get such a sense of um the feel of what that little suburb is like I really liked it trauma sisterhood family dynamics, all good things. Sisters by Daisy Johnson vibes as well. So if you liked that, read this. Then I read After the Sun, which is a collection of short stories by Jonas Ica. Ooh, I'm yawning today. Uh, weird. <laughs> Super strange. I read this because Ben Green read it and that's where I heard of this book and he liked it and said it was kind of like a whirlwind reading experience and I would agree with that. Um, all pretty disjointed, but I would say queer in nature was probably a red thread throughout all of them. Um, how do you summarize a, a collection of this disparate short stories? Uh, oh wow, I forgot about that one. Some are more like magical realism than others, but not in like a quaint, like Murakami way, more in like a fucked up, like dystopian way, um, which was fun in a short story. I feel like uh, magical realism really works for me in short doses. So I don't know, kind of about grief and like addiction and um, technology, technology dependencies, kind of like sci-fi-y vibes. 
I enjoyed this overall. I think it is worth your time. Pick it up if you like weird short story collections. Ooh, then I read On Freedom by Maggie Nelson. I really enjoyed this Maggie Nelson. I'm a Maggie Nelson stan, I'm gonna be honest. I've read everything by her, um, except for Jane. I haven't read Jane. I first started reading her in college. Um, you know, I have a BFA. I went to a liberal arts school. <laughs> it was probably assigned reading to me, which is lucky to think about in retrospect of having smart teachers. Um, yeah, I think the Argonauts was assigned reading to me in college, which is great. Great taste, whoever assigned that to me. But this basically looks at this idea of freedom under four different themes, which is art, sex, drugs, and climate. I loved the one about art. I thought it was really impactful. Like I just said, I went to school for art, so I am versed in those kind of critics and philosophical investigations anyway so i had a lot of context for that chapter and i think maggie nelson is excellent at writing about art she's worked at art schools for a long time um i highlighted this book a lot i annotated this book a lot i found the reading experience really enjoyable i would say this is a pretty accessible maggie nelson if you wanted to start here like it references a lot of academic texts and other thinkers, but there's like a huge glossary at the back. Um, and this definitely was a book that is going to lead me to other books. She cited a bunch of works that I hadn't read before. Um, so I always think that's like really fun in a reading experience of when you can find new books through the book you're reading. How many times can I say the word book? I also liked the kind of questioning about like cancel culture and separating the art versus the artist, which is something that I'm continually going back to. And I think like we are as a culture right now um, and seeing if those things can be separated. And if so, like what value does each have? Can art exist um, and be ready and open for interpretation, even if its creator is a bad boy? And you know, there's various levels of bad boys, but you know what I mean? So I think that's just like an interesting thing that I chew on all the time and I'm still figuring out my relationship to. Okay, and then I read The 2000s Made Me Gay, Essays on Pop Culture by Grace Perry. I only read like, I don't know, like 70% of this book is probably what I would say. I DNF'd it after a while. Uh, I thought this was gonna be less personal narrative driven and more like i don't know i guess like academic or like mm, like engaging in a way that it just wasn't for me it was kind of like snappy and like listical vibes um it it read kind of like a like a bustle article or like just like a listical women's media article which sounds so pejorative but i don't really mean it that way like it's fine for what it is i just had different expectations going into the book i think it was like trying to be a humorous book um and i was like looking for media analysis and critique but i didn't get that then i read mrs dalloway <laughs> um by virginia wolf this is my first wolf i feel like i've talked about it enough in other videos but was it my favorite? No, it's kind of like a day in the life of a society hostess who is bopping around London town and, you know, intersecting with different people in her life who have known her at different points and she's reflecting back on like teenagehood with this love that got away from her um, and kind of like re-examining choices that led her to where she is in her life, which is like a society lady. It's all leading up to throwing a party. Um, I like this book for what it was at the time and what it introduced into the literary world, which was like a woman alone in her thoughts, like bopping around her day. Um, that is the birthplace of the DWM, I would say, really. I'm not saying this book was in general, I'm sure she's riffing off other other writers, but she is one of the foremothers, I guess is what I'm trying to say. 
uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I don't know if this was super accessible to me. I'm not a classics lad. Tapping into that language differentiation, 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 difference. Let's just say difference. Tapping into that language difference of just like old timey English, British, UK English, and it was very referential to like places in London at the time, um, which I just don't have any context for. So I was like, all right, I finished it. Um, I will read another Virginia Woolf. I also read in DNF Weird. I can't remember what I said in October, you guys, because the dates in here, there's a couple that I finished in November, but I'm not sure if I talked about them in my October wrap up. Like I read The Corrections by Jonathan Franzen, finished it November 5th. Excellent, loved that book. What a psychoanalytic examination of the American family in a time and place. I think Franzen is that guy. Uh, and then I also read Samantha Irby, We Were Never Meeting in Real Life, which I vaguely remember talking about in a video and saying it's just not a writer for me. So if you missed those thoughts, there are those thoughts. Uh, that's some thoughts I had. My December reading is going well. Not to spoil it for you, but uh, it's been up and down. Read one of my faves of the year this month. And then I also have a couple two star reads. So you never know what you're gonna get. As we go into this last month of reading, I hope everyone's chilling, having a good time. I feel like I'm not drawn to reading any sort of genre right now. I'm still leaving pretty fiction. Brain, you don't want any nonfiction. I could do a memoir, I think, but nothing like thinkier than that. Uh, so that's a little sneak peek of my December reading. I'm vlogging, I need to do like a wrap up of my top 10 and think about my favorite book covers of the year. I know that Lit Hub article has been circulating, um, but I would like to do a, a formal sit down and kind of tier ranking those and seeing if we can come up with any overarching categories that appear in all of them. Uh, yeah, I hope everyone's having a cool holiday very close to christmas eve which is when my family celebrates christmas three days away hope you're getting time off stay safe wear your mask love you bye